Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to all of you in this lecture. Myself, Professor Nagar SS from KJ Somaya College, Kobargao. In this lecture, we have to start the syllabus for second semester in which we have to start today the syllabus for chemistry second paper CH202 Analytical Chemistry and from this syllabus Today we have to start the chapter number first that is the introduction to the analytical chemistry. So this is a first chapter from this chemistry second paper CH202. Now as far as the title of this paper analytical chemistry is to be considered the total study involved in this particular paper is regarding the analytical branch of a chemistry. So first of all, we are interested to know about what is analytical chemistry. Now, as far as this analytical chemistry is to be considered, so how to define this analytical chemistry? So analytical chemistry is the branch of chemistry that deals with the separation, identification and determination of the amount of compounds present in a sample. So this is a simple definition for this analytical chemistry, which involves the separation, identification and determination of the amount of compounds present in a sample. That's why a analysis work is done in this branch of a chemistry that is a analytical chemistry. Now, as far as this analytical chemistry is to be considered, it is divided into the two important branches. The first branch is called as the qualitative analysis and the second important branch is called as the quantitative analysis. Now, as far as these two branches are to be considered, we have to look towards them one by one. So first of all, we have to look towards the branch first, qualitative analysis. Now, it is concerned with what elements or compounds are present in a sample. So according to this qualitative analysis, we have to look towards what type of elements or compounds are present in a sample. So we are interested to find out that the constituent elements or compounds. It deals with identification of substances. So what type of substances are present in a given sample? So that type of information we will get from this qualitative analysis. inorganic qualitative analysis and second is a organic qualitative analysis. Now, as far as the first sub branch of this qualitative analysis is to be considered, it is inorganic. Now, in inorganic qualitative analysis, ions of elements are separated and identified by precipitation techniques. So, if we want to study a particular sample in which we have to find out the particular ions of elements, what type of ions of elements are to be present. So this study can be done with the help of inorganic qualitative analysis with the help of some precipitation techniques. To find the acidic and basic radicals present in an inorganic mixture is based upon this analysis method. We perform one important practical that is an inorganic qualitative analysis in which from a given inorganic sample, inorganic mixture, we have to find out what type of acidic and basic radicals can be present in that particular mixture. So this study is based upon this type of the qualitative analysis technique and that's why it is called as the inorganic qualitative analysis. That is the first sub branch of qualitative analysis. The second important sub branch of qualitative analysis is called as the organic qualitative analysis. Now what is the meaning of this organic qualitative analysis or what is the use of this organic qualitative analysis. So in, in, organi in organic qualitative analysis, elements or compounds are identified by chemical reactions or by some suitable spectral techniques like IR, NMR, mass or UV spectroscopy. So this is a <clears throat> one analysis techniques. By using this analysis technique, we can find out what type of the elements or compounds are to be present in a particular sample. So this study can be done with the help of 
some chemical reactions or some suitable spectral techniques. These techniques <coughs> may be IR, NMR, mass or UV spectroscopy. Now, in which practicals these type of the qualitative analysis techniques can be used? So, to find the type of substances present in a given organic mixture as well as elements by some chemical reactions is based upon this analysis method. So, if we want to find out what type of substances are present in a given organic mixture as well as what type of elements are present in a given organic mixture. So, this study can be done under the heading organic qualitative analysis. So, this is the second important sub branch of qualitative analysis. Now, as far as the second important branch of analytical chemistry is to be considered, it is called as quantitative analysis. We just studied the qualitative analysis. Now, the second important branch of analytical chemistry is called as the quantitative analysis. Now, what is the meaning of this quantitative analysis and what is the use of this particular quantitative analysis that we have to study now. So, it deals with the determination of how much a particular substance is present in a given sample. So, if you want to find out what is the percentage or the amount of a particular substance present in a given sample, so this type of study can be done with the help of quantitative analysis. Means we have to study the quantitative structure of a particular sample. It can be carried out with different analytical methods in which a physical property of a substance is measured to determine the chemical composition of a substance. In order to find out the chemical composition of a substance, we have to treat this sample with some analytical methods. And in these analytical methods, we have to measure of some physical property. And by using that measurement of physical properties, we have to find out the chemical composition of a substance. Now, the following table shows some important physical properties and the names of a methods to be used. So, this table gives us an idea what type of physical property we have to measure for a particular substance and what type of analytical methods we have to use for that particular purpose. So, first of all, if we want to measure the physical property that is a mass of a substance, then we have to use the analytical method that is called as the gravimetric analysis. If we want to measure the volume of a particular substance, then the analytical method which is to be used that is called as the volumetric analysis. For the absorption of radiation, we have to use the analytical method that is called as the spectrophotometry, which has the different types. It may be infrared spectro spectrophotometry, ultraviolet spectrophotometry or the NMR techniques or there are some again different techniques which is to be used for the measurement of absorption of radiations. The next physical property that is a rotation of radiation. This rotation of a radiation can be measured with the help of the important analytical method that is called as the polarimetry. So this polarimetry gives us an idea regarding the rotation of radiation. The next important physical property that is a refraction of a radiation. So this refraction of a radiations can be measured with the help of refractometry as an analytical method. So in a short we can say that if we want to study the composition of a substance, so that composition of a substance can be done with the help of measurement of some physical properties with the help of the desired analytical method. And by using that methods, we may find out the particular composition of a substance. Now, in order to study this type of the analytical study of a particular sample, so what type of process or what type of steps we have to follow? So for this purpose, we must know here the analytical perspective. So what is the, our aim or what type of steps we have to follow during this particular study? So, as far as this analytical perspective is to be considered, this perspective or this study can be carried out in a five different steps. Steps first to the step five. Each step has its own importance and its own working method. Now, the step first is called as identify and define the problem. The step number second is here, design the experimental procedure. The step third is conduct and experiment and gather the data. Step 4 is 
analyze the experimental data and the step number five is propose a solution to the problem so if we carry out this type of study in these five different steps we can get at the last the detailed study of a particular sample so we have to look toward now what is involved in each and every step so the step first is here identify and define the problem in this first step we have to carry out some study regarding what is the problem's context what type of information is needed so this is a basic study regarding a particular analytical problem in the step number second the step number second is design experimental procedure in which we have to look towards establish design criteria identify potential interference interference establish validation criteria select analytical method establish sampling strategy so in these various aspects we have to study the particular sample under the heading step number two in step number three the step number three is conduct experiment and gather data actually this is a important step in which we have to calibrate instruments and equipment standardize the reagents and gather data so this step number three is very important as far as the analytical perspective is to be considered because the actual working is to be done in this step number three after step number three the step four is analyze experimental data those information which will get from the experiments from step number three so that information is useful for the step number four so it is called as the analyze experimental data reduce and transform data complete statistical analysis verify the results and interpret the results so all the analysis work is done in this step number four and after the step number four the step number five is propose a solution to problem is the answer sufficient does answer suggest a new problem so this step number five is a conclusion step in this step number five after the successful completion of this step number five we get a solution to a particular problem now out of these four uh, five steps the step four and step five had a feedback loop feedback loop we may take here a feedback so as far as this analytical perspective is to be considered this analytical work is carried out under this type of the important five steps in addition to above five steps following questions are also considered while doing a particular study of a particular sample those five steps which we just studied in addition to this we have to look towards some another supplementary questions so these are some nine different supplementary questions each has its own importance so question number first is what is analytical problem question two is what type of information is needed to solve the problem question three is how will the solution to this problem be used question four is what criteria were considered in designing the experimental procedure question five is were there any potential interferences that had to eliminate it if so how were they treated so if some potential interferences are to be there if you want to eliminate that so how to eliminate that potential interferences so for this purpose this question number five is important question six is is there a plan for validating the experimental method question seven is how were the samples collected so this is a collection part what type of different methods were to use for collection of a samples so this is the important part under the question number seven question eight is here is there any evidence that steps 2 3 and 4 of the analytical approach are repeated more than once so as far as this procedure 2 3 and 4 is to be considered the last procedure uh, the last uh, five different steps uh, from this uh, five different steps the steps 2 3 and 4 so whether it is required to repeat more than once that particular steps so it is come under the questions question number 8 and the next question is question number 9 was there a successful conclusion to the problem so in addition to the five different steps which we just studied these some supportive questions are also considered for the conclusion of the solution for the desired problem after studying this type of the important steps for conclusion of the given analytical problem next we have to look towards the common analytical problems what type of analytical problems are to be faced in order to carry out the analytical study so in the study of a substance 
either by using qualitative methods or quantitative methods several problems can be faced by analytical chemist some of them are listed as below so what type of problems are to be faced for the analytical chemist so that problems we have to see here in a brief so first important problem is the need to identify what is present in a sample this is a scope for qualitative analysis for example identifying the products of chemical reaction screening an athlete's urine or blood sample for the presence of a performance enhancing drug etc so this is a first problem which is to be important for the analytical chemist so the first of all they must know what is present in sample or the need how to identify what is present in a sample so it is a very important as far as to carry out a particular analysis of a sample so some important examples are given here such as identifying the products of a chemical reaction if we carry out some chemical reactions so how to identify the products of that this particular chemical reaction the screening and athletes urine or blood sample for the presence of a performance enhancing drug so how to screen this type of the performance enhancing drug so this type of important study is there for which they face some problems the next important problem is the problems in quantitative analysis such as element analysis of a newly synthesized compounds measuring the concentration of glucose in a blood so this type of quantitative analysis study may be faced by the analytical chemists for the conclusion purpose the next important question uh, problem is the improvement of the old methods and designing of new methods for the characterization of a sample while performing this type of the analytical study there there must be necessity of improvement of the old methods and designing of some new methods for the characterization of the sample the next important problem the need to work with smaller quantities of material with more complex materials or species present at lower concentrations need to improve existing analytical methods and developing new analytical techniques so as far as this last problem is to be considered so this problem is regarding how to work with smaller quantities of a material or if a material is a more complex material or in some cases the species present at a lower concentrations so how to treat that particular sample so it is also a problem in front of a analytical chemist so in this purpose they need to improve the existing analytical methods or developing some new analytical techniques so these are the some important problems commonly occurred in particular analytical study in front of the analytical chemists so these problems can be improved or can be removed or can be minimized with the help of some suitable analytical techniques or methods so up to this we studied here what is mean by analytical chemistry what are the important branches of the analytical chemistry what are the sub branches of qualitative analysis what is the different steps can be used for the purpose of analytical study what are the supportive questions for the particular analytical study what type of problems can be commonly occurred in front of the analytical chemists so all this part we studied in this particular lecture for the chapter first that is introduction to the analytical chemistry i hope this chapter is a this lecture is useful for you for this particular chapter number first so the remaining contents from this paper we will take in a next lecture so with this today i stop here thank you for watching this video thank you thank you so much